please welcome Mr. Jorgen Snider, Senior Solution Manager, Virtual Battery Development, AVL List, GmbH, to please be on the dais. And let's move forward to our next presentation session. Thank you so much. Over to you, Ms. Snider. A uh, high degree of freedom, but this is not only an advantage, it can also be a challenge because there are so many options that you have, and uh, to going from an idea to an engineer product might really now also bring the situation that you just take the wrong way. And in the early concept phase, if you have so many uh, ideas and so many options, how do you find out which one is the right and the most promising one? So just when we talk about uh, the development process, we still follow here somehow this, this V-shape uh, process. And especially now, uh, in the early concept phase, it's, it's key about the, 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 the scouting of the, the different technologies. And also here, if you make the right decision at the beginning, it pays off later on. Any decision, any, let's say, wrong exit that you took during the early concept phase might, let's say, become a challenge uh, finally in the uh, design and optimization phase uh, and the product launch. So we use here simulation. Uh, in the early concept phase, but also down the whole uh, road uh, in the entire development process, as you can see here, mainly on the con in the concept phase, uh, and as we call it, active safety and uh, passive safety, just to uh, ensure the battery is in its comfort zone, but on the other side also to simulate what, if you have a thermal runaway, thermal propagation, how uh, countermeasures uh, need to be uh, taking or how, let's say, well they work. And of course, everyone's hot topic, battery life, is of course also here something where simulation has, has a lot of uh, advantages. So let's start with uh, just a give, giving you a few ideas how we work now with the simulation uh, on this uh, early concept phase. So it's quite easy. Normally, maybe you have an Excel file, you have some hand calculations just to get an idea how many cells you need and uh, how, let's say, to assemble that to a battery pack, but there are smarter ways and easier ways. So already in the early concept phase, you just, with a few clicks, can generate a, a vehicle, quite simple. It doesn't have to be the, the super uh, detailed final uh, version, but already having a battery in a vehicle and driving around gives you, a, uh, uh, let's say, a good idea about driving range, um, charging, uh, and, and, and so on. So. When we start in this early phase, we have a pack generator that allows us to select from a library of cells. It doesn't matter if it's a Tycan cell in the, uh, from LG, if it's a uh, prismatic cell from the BMW or whatever Tesla cell, um, 4680 uh, from Model Y. So you just can select one of those cells which are already uh, available in the market and uh, put it in your configuration. So you can stack them together and see what is uh, more or less the individual uh, configuration, like you can see here, uh, the same space, the same configuration with uh, pouch, prismatic, or cylindrical cell. You get already a first estimation on the weight and, and the weight distribution. And of course, now you can, of course, also put your battery pack in a vehicle and virtually simulate uh, different scenarios. And um, we just put here attention that the, the energy content is in all the three configurations. Um, the same or almost the same, but you already can see they have different power output depending, of course, on, on the design and the configuration. And now when we put these uh, battery packs now in, in, a, in a week and run them on a, on a track, uh, of course, we will identify that there are also differences in the behavior, in the temperature, so the same cooling maybe. And uh, due to the lower power of the cylindrical cell, uh, we also see then there is a, a higher temperature uh, level reached with uh, the cylindrical cell. So you already can make a nice uh, pre-selection of candidates that are promising or uh, those who might have here, um, let's say, disadvantages. And of course, at that time already, since this is a cell library that has um, its physical foundation included, you can at that time already look at the anode and cathode potential. So especially also you can do your fast charging uh, optimization in an early concept phase and see how long it would take potentially to charge 
this EV. And as mentioned before, maybe you can already kick out the uh, cylindrical configuration because it simply has uh, critical temperature. So either you change something in the cooling concept or you might need to take this option out. And of course, you can already give some uh, uh, let's say overview about the driving range and uh, how, let's say, the individual vehicles perform, also drivability. We have seen before the, the, the weight of the pack, you can also include that into the vehicle and just uh, make some drivability and um, uh, performance attribute analysis uh, on these vehicles. And finally, of course, also, if you have already some, let's say, rough ideas about the costs of the individual uh, components and the cell, but of course also the, the cooling, you just can finish your decision matrix, so you can just put in all the individual parameters. And as we say, those are parameters based on facts and not on, on gut feeling or, let's say, some, some uh, estimations, uh, hand calculations or whatever. And this helps you to identify the most uh, promising uh, configurations. And of course, when you can go down the, the road, going into more detailed investigations, optimizing the design, of course, you can now also go from a simple system level to a, a component level in a full 3D simulation uh, to do design optimization on bus bars, cooling, or, or whatever. And of course, you also can investigate how these cells, how the cooling concept performs for a new cell, but also what if the cell is aged, you have higher inner resistances, um, and is the uh, design still capable of, of uh, handling aged cells if there is anything on the cooling side to optimize. You can already check that here in this uh, design optimization loop. And of course, battery aging, fast charging. So we also have electrochemical models that uh, allow us to go to the edge of uh, what the cell physically can handle. So like in this case, a new cell versus an aged cell or a cell, like in this case with uh, silicon uh, and uh, carbon uh, graphite uh, composite in the anode, just what if the silicon is aged out, like in this particular case, uh, what does it mean for fast charging? What does it mean in general for charging? And as you can see, just if this anode is aged, if the graphite is aged, then you get problems that it also runs into lithium plating because it uh, has um, uh, reached quite, quite fast the anode uh, potential limit. And therefore, you would stress or damage even more uh, the aged cell. So already here, you can use simulation to, to uh, develop individual PMS strategies for different cell category, um, aging states. And as I said at the end, you might also want to run it uh, on, in a realistic um, setting. So like in this case, um, we put it on a race tech, it's the Porsche Taycan, uh, and um, running on the Nürburgring. And as you can see also here, uh, not only we have information about um, what is the best lap time, but also what is the current temperature in the individual cells, what is the temperature uh, of the cooling, and uh, they are just running here two laps. And we also have been interested what if I have a low temperature, minus 10 degrees starting, and I do a hard, a hard cornering, a hard breaking, so recuperation, uh, we just can see here that uh, during the, uh, when the temperature is cold, uh, we have here lithium plating uh, and uh, uh, damage of the battery. If that happens just for a few seconds, that would not be a problem, but you're permanently running under these conditions, this might uh, cause a, an accelerated aging of your battery. Of course, now you might ask, okay, this is simulation, but can I trust how, how to ensure that the simulation results are, are correct? So we, we have our own benchmark program. So we, we have our uh, own Ionic 5. We completely analyzed. Uh, we did a teardown. Uh, we looked at the individual components. And uh, of course, now we have a, a strong um, engineering team, a strong uh, measurement uh, division. And we just also now put it on our own test beds and analyzed it. So not only the battery pack, but of course also the module. And uh, this was just also important for us to understand about how accurate can we be with our simulations when we later on put it on a test bed. So this is just our battery module after we put our fingers on and put some cables in with uh, 37 temperature sensors, some voltage sensors and uh, did a, huge list of uh, 
test, challenging tests with different C rates, different temperatures, uh, driving profiles, uh, charging profiles, HPPC test, and just also to see how those compare to our simulation model. And as you can see here, on the one side, it's a 3D simulation where we uh, simulate the profile that we have tested. You see the, the temperature increase. You see also the influence of the uh, cooling plate. So it's colder at the bottom. You see the temperature rise when uh, the, uh, the battery is, is uh, discharged. And you see also on the right side here, comparison uh, and a quite really good match between simulation data and measurements. And the same, of course, is also valid for, for the coolant. So we also, of course, in included the coolant path as well. So that works well. As, and finally, we put everything together on the vehicle. So not only looking at it in 3D, but also put it in a, in a vehicle. Uh, each module has now been considered also in, uh, in a simplified way, but still uh, discretized. You see also here, uh, the cooling path, the cooling channels, this uh, serpentine shape uh, design uh, from the Ionic 5, the cooling plate, and all those parts have been, uh, let's say, simulated, and again, also comparing here uh, on a measured drive cycle, and just also to give you an idea, so the, the energy consumption matches also here nicely between the tested, so our test and the simulation results. So with that, I'm already at the end of the overview, just to summarize that again. So we are starting in the early concept phase with um, already a detailed uh, simulation support and follow the whole uh, development process with the individual uh, features and uh, uh, workflows and methods. And we have on the one side the Wii Suite, which is uh, VSM. You could see the, the nice uh, car running on the, on the Nürburgring. And the Cruise M is the system simulation tool. And uh, on the other side, if you're more in the design optimization, it's the E-Suite. I would just have a toolbox that uh, uh, includes uh, the, the system and the, the 3D simulation uh, capabilities. So you're just always able to handle all those things depending on what is your task. So with that, I'm at the end. Thank you very much for uh, listening. If there are any questions, we are also at the booth uh, uh, 1461. So we're happy also to answer questions there. Feel free to join us, pass by. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Sneeder, for sharing your deep insights on the ever-changing world of batteries. May I please request you to come up on the dais again for your two minutes. And also may I request Mr. Amit Sharma, who heads the Conference Division for Renewable Energy and the Battery Show, to please hand over a token of appreciation to our respected dignitary today. May we please have a photo opportunity for the two dignitaries?